hello friends welcome back once again to my channel so in this video uh, we'll be building up a complete application uh, just like we have a google authenticator okay so we'll do everything uh, using abap of course so to enable the two-factor authentication mechanism using abap so that's the overall goal by the way so uh, what is this two-factor authentication and the, 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 the use case probably will um, keen to know for example, uh, you probably might have, you know, come across this kind of requirement where certain API providers, uh, right? It, it's not just happy to have the API key to be passed, right? While making a request to that API uh, uh, service. But additionally, they want to have certain token, right, to pass along so that they can uh, just, just try to, uh, you know, ensure this two-factor authentication is satisfied, right? So in those cases, uh, from above side, how we can you know generate the token uh, is what uh, the focus uh, in this video. All right. So let's quickly talk about what is the two-factor authentication. It's very simple concept conceptually. So here is my provider uh, which will provide the data, for example, and here is my uh, consumer, right, or user, uh, as you can see. Now they can have been a, in a different time zone, possible. Now, but the thing is they probably sharing the same secret key so this secret key is nothing the password or it's not not the api key right that we generally use all right from the btp perspective so it's simple uh, a security key any kind of a uh, uh, you know kind of a alphabetical numeric characters we'll talk about more about this security key but because it has to follow a certain pattern and that is called base 32 patterns we'll, we'll shortly uh, get into that but what i said like this is a security key has to be shared across both provider and consumer and based on that security key this consumer has to generate a token which uh, should be passed to this provider side and the provider will also try uh, using a token using the same security key right and if this both the token matches like the token uh, which uh, comes from the consumer side and the token which been generated by the provider side itself if both the tokens matches that means is a correct consumer which is actually making a request to right that's the kind of a uh, extra security layer that it offers right it's sim similar like a google authenticator which is uh, we are going to build in above all right let's quickly talk about the algorithm so the context probably we just understood just to enable two of factor authentication on top of kind of a, a kind of an additional security layer and algorithmically it actually uses something called a hash based message you know authentication code generator which is nothing but a hmac so that uh, kind of a mechanism or you know cryptography that will be using to generate a, a, a hash key okay and this hash key is eventually to be converted into a numeric value i'll talk about that in the programming soon now the constraint parts is as i just mentioned the security key has to follow a best 32 pattern and base 32 means it has to have this kind of a character set okay it cannot uh, accept any other characters or other numeric values uh, the simple reason is probably to avoid the human error okay so that is the simple reason because let's say for example if you put zero or uh, if you put a character like oh both look same right so that the reason zero is not uh, an acceptable numeric value and that's the way one as well because one and l looks like very similar so that's the reason all should be capital letter and only this kind of a basic numeric uh, values right uh, should be acceptable so that's the only constant and the flow uh, let's understand quickly what's the flow so user in this case of course uh, not a user because uh, in this case above side we are going to make a request to the provider side right so it's basically a client not that a uh, human user so the client will generate uh, a, a kind of a security hash key right so a um, kind of a security key which been shared across between provider and consumer as i just explained so that security key uh, will be converted into uh, from base 32 hexadecimal at the same time the time zone right under which that um, both provider and consumers runs through on the same time zone they are just going to generate the epoch time which is an unix uh, java time that will be also converted to hex, into hex value or hexadecimal value because we'll be using a class called CLAB page Mac that accepts a hex, hex string, okay? And this will generate kind of a hexadecimal value which eventually uh, to be converted into a decimal because we'll be converting into a kind of a six digit or you know, eight digit or 10 digit depends on the requirement, the numeric value, right? So that will be passing as a token to the, to the provider side uh, through some uh, header request or something, right? So 
our focus is just to generate the token just like we use a google authenticator by the way once you are ready with this application development the same secret key if you just try to uh, integrate with your google authenticator then you'll see it performs i mean it generates the same token at the same time that would be fantastic experience i believe now additionally uh, you have to create one more table so this table will contain this kind of uh, fields because the user uh, which is making a request are trying to generate a token if uh, that you same user or client uh, generates uh, trying to generate the same token within a, within a 30 periods of token expiry then obviously it is supposed to generate the same token but that kind of a logic can be built if we can store certain these values like the last run time etc and the constant of time in a table format right so that's the reason this table is needed you can make a little bit of improvisation here like in, just like not the user id but also the application id or kind of a, a api id if you want to add as a composite key would, would be also nice because same user id can be like same user rather can 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 make a request to different apis right and consuming this class or this kind of a, a totp generation or time based otp generator class so in that case it can conflict with the epoch time so that's the reason uh, you can make a little bit of improvisation by adding one more extra key field if you want once you're done you can test it and it will just work like a charm it will just generate the same key and i, I was doing some uh, uh, free open source kind of a token generator online i was testing it and you can see the same kind of a number is always generates right so that's the overall uh, fundamentals so let's get into the coding now so technically uh, it's all above code but i don't have any above system unfortunately so i'm just making a flavor or you no know, uh, something like I'll use the language as ABAP so that it looks like a kind of an ABAP editor for you. But if we just copy and uh, paste this code, which I've already shared in the GitHub repository, then uh, it's a piece of cake for you to just test and see how it works. Of course, you have to create the table, which I just explained. So let's quickly check this code and how it's been you know, designed. So it's a class, as you can see, it's a private uh, instantiation because this class can be called you know, to create multiple times in a loop process, let's say, for example, to generate uh, the token, right? Uh, it may happen, it's not necessarily, but it can be. So just to ensure that it gener doesn't generate you know, each time a different instance object. So I just wanted to ensure the private instantiation, which is nothing but a singleton pattern. All right, and it has two methods, of course. One is the static method, get instance where you can pass the token number of characters and the duration for which this token will valid and of course the security key so the three values once you pass then it will give you a instance generation as a return right and the other method which is a public that is called get totp and of course you have to call this to get the token back so let's understand what this method does for us because that is what our focus technically so it is just uh, converting the base 32 uh, uh, hex values because if we just look at our uh, design flow quickly uh, this is what we are doing right so in the uh, we are just converting the security key to kind of a, a base 32 hex character uh, so that is what i'm doing over here as you can relate to uh, now once i do this base 32 uh, i'm getting an hex value right over here or over here but just to make sure that uh, if as i said if i being called multiple times then um, it should not keep on generating the hex for the same security key there is no point once i have that then of course going for the epoch time creation which is a kind of a java time uh, generation and this two uh, i'll be passing to this class as i said uh, one for the instantiation and other for the update process this two i'm just passing to the same class and once I'm done, I'm just uh, creating the final method of this class to get the hex key. That's all. And of course, I have to do a little bit of um, uh, additional things on which this hex decimal, uh, uh, hex to decimal conversion I have to make. And this is the method it does convert. And finally, I'm getting the OTP, which I'm just interested to uh, as a token. That's all. So once you just you know, if you just you know. I test this it's a similar way i'm just calling this gate instance passing this key length and period etc and i'm just calling this method and i can see a result set like that okay as you as i've mentioned in the screenshot so 
if you are interested to you know little know about what it does just to explain in case uh, you are interested it's an optional of course uh, so uh, this 32 hex is nothing uh, it just you know takes a characters one second so close it so it takes the allowed characters so this allowed characters as i said i should follow along this kind of a pattern okay it should not extra uh, accept any other characters and then it's getting the index like the positional index of the input security key right and that indexing each index i'm converting into binary and collecting those binaries finally that set of binaries i'm converting into the hex value right so this kind of internal private methods i have created for the for the purpose right and uh, if you go to um, epoch time so this is a little bit interesting so uh, yeah so epoch time is actually getting the current time all right and um, i have to ensure that across the device across the globe uh, it will be a common time zone otherwise um, the time stamp will be different so that's why i'm converting it to a time zone called utc and then i'm converting that time stamp into a java time stamp convention and finally i'm dividing it by the validity period which is a 30 seconds or whatever the uh, time uh, period that you want to set it up for your uh, for your token generator i'm just dividing by that all right so one more thing uh, probably i just explained something about the table so probably yeah, this is where the code comes uh, how this table is actually using so you see that uh, with the same user i'm just trying to get from the gt log uh, otp log so just to see if that uh, is there any entry created already against that user and of course this user is a backend user so if that is not there then makes sense to all that are generated the epoch time we just you know gone through this method converting back to the hexadecimal because that value hexadecimal value only have this particular class can accept right all right so and if it is not there then i'm inserting as a fresh record and if it is there then i'm validating if it is uh, more than 30 seconds it means it's already expired if it is then again i'm recalculating and modifying the data otherwise i'm using the same data which has already been generated so that within a time period if user are trying to make uh, or generate this token multiple times it will ensure that it will always generate the same token not a not an invalid token right so that's what it does right uh that pretty much i think uh, uh, this uh, this video all over so that it 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 behaves like a simple google authenticator so whatever the secret key you are trying to uh, test this application is the same secret key you just you know add to our google authenticator then you will also see your ABA program and the google authenticator generates the same token it's a piece of cake right so i have already shared this code in my github repository you can find it over here same code we just have explained over here right so you just copy paste and create the table and execute boom you are done okay thanks for watching i hope that is helpful to you uh, give me a thumbs up if, if you you know like me work and share your comments feedback with your friends also and colleagues so that they shouldn't waste time creating the same thing again as a scratch this meet again soon thanks for watching goodbye